It's Saturday, between Good Friday and Easter Sunday. And this is a day that, uh, for much of church history, the, some parts of the church have referred to as Black Saturday. Uh, and for Jesus' disciples, it was indeed a dark day, the day between the crucifixion and the resurrection on Easter Sunday. Jesus had told them that he was going to die, and he was going to rise again. Uh, but we know that they did not understand, they did not believe. Uh, it was lost on them what was happening. And from their perspective, Friday was a complete disaster. Uh, their teacher, their leader, uh, their friend had been taken from them uh, in a tragic end. Uh, and they did not know what was coming. Uh, I think it's, it's important for us to remember that Jesus was, was not just a teacher to them, uh, but surely he was... Uh, the best friend that any of them had ever had. Uh, there was nobody else like him who ever walked on the earth. And for them to know him and to walk with him and to have meals with him and, and to, to spend time with him uh, surely was, was to form a relationship with him unlike any other that they'd known. And to see him taken from them so violently on Friday uh, must have been tragic on a number of levels. Now, uh, the scriptures are very quiet about what happened on that Saturday. Uh, it is significant, I think, that he, he wanted his people to wait that day. Uh, surely Jesus could have, have died and instantly risen again, but in God's providence, he would be in, it would be the third day that he rose. In God's providence, uh, his people would have to wait uh, for the promises to be to be answered, for their deliverance to come, for the sun to rise. And I think that's significant for us to remember today that it is often God's purposes for us to wait, to wait in faith, to wait in hope, uh, to wait prayerfully for him to answer, for him to deliver, for him to come. Um, it's difficult for us so yeah, we, we are inclined to be doers, aren't we? Problem solvers, people that want to take action and deal with thing, our, things ourselves. We don't like to wait. It sometimes is very uncomfortable to wait. And yet in God's providence, he often has his people wait. Wait for prayers to be answered. Wait for trials to come to an end. Wait for the deliverance that he's promised. Wait for the provision that we need. Uh, it's... It's his pleasure and his purpose for us to be sanctified in waiting. And uh, as, as much as we might be doers and uh, people who like to take action and pro solve problems, as Christians, uh, we must be people who wait. We must be people who wait in, in patience and wait in hope. Uh, wait to see our God deliver us from the trial in his own timing. Uh, the, the psalmist puts it uh, in Psalm 130 this way, uh, in verse 5, I will wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in his word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord, more than watchmen for the morning, more than watchmen for the morning. I want to encourage you, brothers and sisters, be patient as you wait. I know that many of you are, are in trials. All of us together are in this trial of not being able to meet together, but but each of us have our own trials right now. And God will deliver us from those trials in his own timing, either in this life or at the resurrection. We do not know. But we do know uh, that we will not wait forever and that none who wait for him will be put to shame, as David says in Psalm 25. We do know that he who laid in the grave that Saturday, he rose again on Sunday. And his disciples, they did not know what they were waiting for, uh, but they did not have to wait long. And likewise, uh, we, we who do know what we're waiting for, we're waiting to see our Savior's face. We're waiting for all of his promises to be fulfilled. We're waiting for the marriage supper of the Lamb. We won't have to wait much longer. We do know that.